Hi everyone, this is James Shore with my lessons learned about Lint and JavaScript. We're going to look at what linting is, how to use it, and how to incorporate it into your automated build. Lint tools read your source code and look for common mistakes. In JavaScript, this means things like missing semicolons or unsafe comparison op operators. JavaScript is full of gotchas that silently introduce bugs, and a linter is invaluable for keeping your code defect free. The leading linter for JavaScript is JS Lint by the famed Douglas Crockford. Now, Douglas Crockford can be a bit mm, curmudgeonly, and some people don't agree with some of the choices he's made with JS Lint. They've forked JS Lint to create JS Hint. It provides more control over what's flagged as an error and what's not. I chose to use JS Hint for Let's Code Test Driven JavaScript, but most of what I'm about to describe is equally applicable to JS Lint. The easiest way to run JS Hint is to go to the website, paste in your code, and hit the Lint button. That's fine for one-off scripts, but not really suitable for professional web development. Another option is to use the Node Package Manager to install a copy of JS Hint. You'll need to install Node first, of course, if you haven't already. If you use the dash G option when you install JS Hint, it will put a convenient command line interface on your path. Personally, I don't think the manual approach is a good idea, though. JavaScript has so many gotchas that you really need to run Lint all the time as part of your automated build. And if it's going to be in your automated build, you should install JS Hint locally, not globally. That will ensure that your build still works when other people check out your repository. Once JS Hint is installed, you can require it in your build script. JS Hint and JS Lint both provide the same interface, and it's not a particularly friendly one. There's only one function exposed by the module, JS Hint. It takes the source code to check, a set of options, and an optional set of globals, and it returns true or false depending on whether the Lint succeeded or failed. It also populates an errors array on the JS Hint function with specific error messages, and I'll explain those details in a moment. The first parameter is the source code. You'll need to load your files from the file system. To load a file, use the read file sync function in Node's FS module. Read file sync reads an entire file into memory. It takes a file encoding. If you're not sure what to use, UTF-8 is usually a safe bet. Once you have the file, you can pass it to JS Hint. Your automated build will likely have a list of files to check, so you'll need a function that calls lint for each file and collates the overall pass-fail status as it goes. The second parameter is an object containing your JS Hint options. These options control what lint complains about and what it allows to pass. They're described very well in detail on the JS Hint website, so I won't repeat those details here. The third parameter is optional. It's an object containing your global variables. If you set the undef option to true, then JS Lint will complain if you use any variables that haven't been explicitly declared. This third parameter allows you to make exceptions to the rule. For each global variable name you include, you set it to true if your code is allowed to change the variable, or false if it isn't. You can also define options and globals by using a block comment at the top of a JavaScript file or at the start of a function. This is useful for changing your global JS Hint options on a case-by-case -case basis. When you run JS Hint, it returns true or false according to whether or not your code passed. That true or false is enough to cause your build to fail when you need it to, but you'll probably want to print out the details of what Lint found as well. To do that, you'll want to examine the JS Hint errors array. Some elements of the array are blank. You can just skip those. The rest are objects with three properties. Line, which is the line number. Evidence, which is the source code containing the problem. And reason, which is Lint's error message. Sometimes line and evidence are left out, so be sure to check for that. So that's what I've learned so far about Lint and JavaScript. To summarize, Lint is a tool for checking for problems in your source code. Given JavaScript's gotchas, I think it's an indispensable part of your automated build. You can use JS Hint to include Lint in your build. Check out the source code for this episode for an ep example of how to do it. The link is available on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.